I want to talk about the numeric pain rating scale. And as I mentioned earlier, some people might go, man, that's like the easiest scale in the world. Why do you need to talk about it? But again, I will say it is easily the most common clinical, standardized clinical self-report tool that you're going to find anywhere. Um, people don't only use it for pain, of course. You can use it for any number of things. How was your sleep last night? How, I don't know, how happy are you? All those sorts of things. And so um, it's, it is very important for us to talk about it. And yet I'm sure if your education isn't anything like mine, at best you've got assess pain on a 0 to 10 scale. <laughs> and just go from there. So there really wasn't a whole lot of discussion around it, um, but it seems to be very important. First of all, just a quick nomenclature thing. I want to make sure everybody's clear on this, because I know that, again, when I learned about these things back in the mid-90s, we called everything a BAS. Everything was BAS. Zero to ten scale was BAS, uh, which isn't true. A visual analog scale is the bottom one there, which is usually a ten centimeter line that has anchors at either end. The patient puts a mark somewhere on that line, and you usually use a ruler to measure from the left to wherever they made their, uh, their mark. The numeric rating scale is the one on the top, where it actually gives you numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sometimes more than that, sometimes it goes up to 20, sometimes it even goes up to 100, depending on how fine a gradation you want to get. Again, it has, has um, anchors on either end, and the patient circles the number, or just tells you the number, right? You can just administer it orally. Right? Which is one of the nice things about this, which is why it's so commonly used. It takes literally 30 seconds to apply and can be interpreted immediately. The visual analog scale, really, I will say probably the primary use for this is in research uh, because it is as close to an inherently linear scale as you can get. And so for statisticians, for statistical purposes, some people will argue, for example, that 0 to 10 really isn't a linear scale that the distance between 0 and 1 isn't the same as the distance between, say, 5 and 6, whereas the difference between you know, 1 centimeter and 2 centimeters is the same as the difference between 5 and 6 centimeters. They're both 1 centimeter. So it's inherently linear, so it sort of satisfies all these statistical assumptions that are necessary for these types of analyses. However, most of the research that's been done comparing these two scales has found that the numeric rating scale is superior for clinical purposes, a 0 to 10 rating scale, um, there's fewer errors made, it's less ambiguous for people. So, on balance, using the grading scale, it's easier and it seems to work even better. Here's a question for you one of my favorite questions. What are the anchors on this scale? We'll start with the easy one, which is zero. What's the normal anchor there? No pain, right? Well, that one's fairly simple. What's a 10? What's a 10? They don't want to pitch me an option for something that maybe they've heard clinically or that they use, or they've been told to use. The most you've ever felt. So the, the most pain you've ever felt? Worst pain imaginable in case they've never had severe pain. Worst pain imaginable, okay. Those are probably the two most common. Any other anchors that people have heard? Any other descriptors for a 10? Getting kicked in the privates. Getting kicked in the privates? <laughs> That's unpleasant. I'm sure. Any others? Giving birth. Giving birth. Applies towards a certain part of the population, but yeah, <laughs> certainly. I've seen two natural childbirths. <laughs> it looked unpleasant. <laughs> Any, any other anchors that people have heard? All right. I want to share this with you. Now, I haven't given this to you, and there's a reason why I haven't. What we're going to see here is an essay that was given to me, actually, from um, one of my colleagues, a fellow by the name of Mike Sankster out in uh, Nova Scotia, Halifax. Now, before, I, before we read through this, I'll just give you some background here. So Mike's... Um, Mike's role, actually, he works in a chronic pain center focusing specifically on his role is mostly adolescents with chronic pain, which is an interesting sort of underserviced population, really, um, adolescents with chronic pain. And one of the things he tries to do with these folks, these, these kids, is to get them to express their pain in different ways, sometimes through art, through poetry, through uh, creative writing, which is what this one is, or reflective writing. 
He sent this one to me. Um, now, this isn't mine, so I'm not going to give it to you either. Okay, but uh, he did give me permission to use it. So uh, this was an experience, this was a 15-year-old patient of his talking about her experience with the numeric rating scale. I'm just going to have you read that. Wishing that I was this eloquent at 15, but I wasn't. Um, I find this actually really quite exciting. In fact, this has become arguably one of the more important documents, believe it or not, in my, uh, in my little briefcase. So she's basically said, of the two most common anchors we use, which is the worst pain you can imagine, or the worst you've ever felt, they were sort of out for her. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And when you think about it, if I was to ask you all to imagine the worst thing, the worst pain you could possibly imagine, honestly, I don't know what that would be for me personally. Maybe you guys can, can imagine it. Um, I've experienced lots of very unpleasant pains in my life. Is that the worst I could possibly get to? I'm not sure. Just last week, in fact, I accidentally shoved a fork in underneath my thumbnail. It hurt like hell. Um, but is that the worst thing I can imagine? Probably not. Um, so, that one becomes hard. Worst pain ever, it could be that this person has led a blessed life and that this stubbed toe is in fact the worst pain they've ever experienced, in which case I guess it's a 10. It could on the other hand be that this person has experienced a pile of pain in their life. And so what they're, they're coming to you for treatment for might I guess in comparison be two. But what's your reaction when the patient says their pain is a two? It's just not that bad. All right, so let's say that we've debunked perhaps those two most common anchors. Anyone want to pitch in an alternative? Anything else you might, uh, you might think about <coughs> for a 10? Why don't we change the scale? Rate oh. your pain on a scale of 0 to infinity. Whoa, rate your pain on a scale from 0 to infinity. Just give me a number. <laughs> That one becomes hard. Um, a million. Perfect. Okay. I guess an example of this case being like chronic pain, you could suggest like the worst pain you've experienced with this condition, like by the time you've had this condition. Sure, sure. So, and she kind of made that suggestion almost there at the end. She says, you know, maybe, maybe ask me to maybe rate it now relative to what it was like two weeks ago, perhaps. Um, if that was the worst, maybe then, is this, is this better or worse now? You know, if you were to try and take that analogy a little bit further, what you would do, have to do there is say something like, okay, when you first come in, you know, your pain is a five. It has to be a five because we need, we need direction on either side so you can move up or down, right? But that's a possibility, I suppose. What's the opposite of no pain? Because it's really what we're asking here. What's the opposite of no pain? It's one of those questions that I probably think far too hard about. However, I will say this. 
I think the anchor here that you use can change the rating that you get. That if you were to put an anchor on at something like worst pain imaginable, and then the next day you ask them something like worst pain ever, that could conceivably change the rating that you get. And I think you can be consistent with that. I'll tell you what, what I've been using, um, because it by definition makes sense, at least in my mind, is a 10 would be something like extreme pain. If we're talking about literally the extremes of the scale. There are other alternatives. 10 might be, you could use a, you could use a descriptor like terrible or torturing or intolerable could work. One I don't like that I've heard people use is things like 10 would be I have to call the ambulance for you or I have to send you to Emerge. I can tell you that many people with chronic pain in particular have been to Emerge many times and gotten no care. So a question like that assumes that they think that Emerge can help them. So I don't like that one either. Those, all those things like 10 is like getting kicked in the or uh, getting hit by a truck or getting bitten by an alligator. I mean, those are all, in my mind, those are almost, they, they, they verge on insulting, to be honest, because none of us have ever had that experience, I hope. Um, so it's, you know, and in fact, as we've known, I could say 10 is like getting your arm bitten off by a shark. But if I use Bethany Hamilton's experience, that wouldn't have been terribly bad at the time, right? Uh, there are other things that you're worried about more so when you get your arm bitten off by a shark. So. Um, I think we need to think about this a little bit, and, and my, my suggestion for you is to choose an anchor that makes sense, one that's not insulting, and one that you can use consistently from visit to visit to visit. Because we all recognize that my 3 out of 10, your 3 out of 10, your 3 out of 10 are all different. Right? I've got some internal calibration of what a 0 to 10, so what sort of 10 um, gradations of pain, of my pain are, it's somewhere buried in my, in my head. And so when you ask me that scale, I will give you that based on what you've just told me, based how, on how I think about the gradations from 0 to 10. But you better make sure that you ask me that, that question consistently if you want to use that to evaluate change over time. Why is this important, though? In a, in a, in a while, we're going to talk about prognosis. One of the strongest prognostic factors in, I can tell you, at least in acute whiplash, which is where, what I've been focusing on over the course of my career, is pain intensity. Is a score of, of five out of ten, or sorry, six out of ten or higher. It's one of the most strongest prognostic factors of developing chronic problems later on. But if, depending on what anchor I put on that ten, I can probably affect that. I can probably influence the rating I get by giving them a different anchor. Let me give you another example of why this is important. The World Health Organization has something called their analgesic ladder. And the analgesic ladder is a three-step sort of thing that says, um, you know, here's your first line therapy for pain, second line, and third line. Okay? Um, so it starts with sort of NSAIDs, then to opioids, then to opioids with, with adjuvant treatment. There are, I know, I, I have seen in clinics, um, for clinicians, for physicians in particular, the, the analgesic ladder that has written on it zero to three, four to six, seven and above. People are using this scale to actually guide clinical treatment decisions, and yet I would argue that most of us don't really know what it means. We don't think twice about the anchor that we put on it, and yet it may completely influence the treatment that a patient gets. It may be the difference between an NSAID and an opioid. So I really do think this is immensely important, and yet we really don't give enough time uh, to thinking about it. 